So my topic is follow-up, and, and, and what I want to do is talk about follow-up and retention from the standpoint of increasing your income, keeping the business on the books, keeping the income coming in year after year. So why should we follow up? What's the point? What's the reason to follow up? Number one, there's a professional integrity issue. You've made the sale, the person has bought it, but we owe them uh, the, the, the opportunity to come back and explain to them what they bought. Just like Melissa shared in her value-based selling segment, that the business owner might purchase it just based on the consultation. <coughs> And so, just like Melissa went back and they were saying, well, how much is this going to cost? How much is this going to cost? So there is a responsibility we have to go back and say, now you own this service, let us share with you what all this can do. Uh, secondly, personal retention. Just like we've heard throughout the weekend, we're earning out this advance commission. When we're paid the advance commission, we have to earn it out over a 12-month period, and we'll talk about some of that in a few minutes as well. And then the long-term renewal income. I think. Uh, uh, just, just when we heard uh, Lorna Rasmussen yesterday talking about recruiting professionals and that the fact that this is unique and that we've got this residual income opportunity. Well, it's really residual if the business stays on the books, right? It's not residual if everyone that we enroll cancels the membership. That's going to be a long road to hoe if they're, if they're blowing out the back end as fast as they're coming in the front, okay? So we've got to make sure that we keep them on the books. Referral opportunities. The follow-up is a great time to get referrals. Uh, you, you, I, I've got a philosophy personally that says that I ask for referral business after the person has purchased something for me that they've actually gotten value out of. Okay? It doesn't mean you can't ask for the referral in the initial meeting, but oftentimes with that business owner, you, that, that business owner's very busy. We were practicing role play exercises where we had 10 and 15 minutes. Well, that's not unlike what's gonna happen in the field, in the marketplace. You're gonna have a busy business owner that has appointments all throughout the day, and you may not have the opportunity to ask for that referral business in that first appointment. So you're gonna have those opportunities in the follow-up. Personal plan enrollment opportunity. Again, uh, it's enough to go through the business owner legal solution plan, but you should, we should all have the opportunity at some point to present to the business owner that they want to protect themselves personally with the family plan, and that's probably going to happen in the follow-up as well. Employee group enrollment opportunities happening in the follow-up, and then associate recruitment opportunities can all take place in the follow-up. So you see why we want to follow up, right? There's a lot of opportunity laying in the follow-up. Now, for purposes of what I'm going to present today, I'm going to talk just about the business owner legal solution plan. I'm going to talk about just the $75 plan focused on 1 to 50 employees. I'm going to assume that we're in a face-to-face -face follow up. It doesn't always work that way. You heard me mention yesterday in my presentation that uh, I've presented this before to business owners maybe in another state or another part of the state where I couldn't do a face-to-face -face presentation. So I may not be able to do a face-to-face -face follow up, but let's just assume for, for the purpose of my presentation today, uh, let's assume that you are with the business owner following up face-to-face. -face. And we're gonna assume that the business owner has her new packet. You heard Melissa say that two weeks later. Well, why two weeks later? Because three days later, they don't have their membership packet yet, okay? And you can do the follow up before they get the packet, but you might as well let them go ahead and get the materials because then that can be incorporated into your follow-up. And then I always block out one hour for the follow-up. It doesn't mean I'm going to get an hour. I may block it, I, but I block the hour out because some business owners will give me that time. I will take that full hour if they will give it to me, okay, because there's enough to go over. There's enough value in our membership. And again, we're not wanting to make this thing a one-hour presentation on the front end if we can avoid it. If the business owner's busy and, and they'll purchase it within 10 minutes because of the first two or three benefits, what did Melissa say? We shut up and we start writing, right? We get go ahead and, and, and make the sale, as it were. But in the follow-up, now they own it, okay? Think of it this way. When you go in to purchase a car, uh, you know, and you see the salesperson walk, if, let's assume it's not a salesperson you have a relationship with, and you pull out onto the car lot and, and here they come, you know, you're like, oh great, here's the sales guy, you know, or gal, and they come over and they talk to you and, and the whole bit. Well, that's the presentation. And, and you may not want that to last a long time. You may just be there to get some information. But what about after you've purchased the car? Don't you like it when the salesperson takes the time to walk around and show you what you just bought? 
Don't you not like trading in a car or selling a car and finding out on the day that you've turned the car in or handed ownership over to someone else that there were three amazing features that the car had that you never knew it had? If you had just pushed that one button, it would have done this, or, wow, we had a sunroof? <laughs> I didn't know what that was. <laughs> you, hopefully you know if you have a sunroof. But the point is, maybe you had some great feature on the radio. Maybe you had some great feature with the air conditioning or something with cruise control, and you didn't know about it because you didn't. no one ever showed you to push that one button. Same idea here. One hour time block. Now, I have two objectives when I do the follow-up. If, if nothing else happens, if the phone rings, if an emergency takes place, if, if the business owner has to run off and do something else unexpectedly, I have two things I want to accomplish. Number one, I want to get that new member to call the provider law firm. Not just talk about doing it, but call them. Melissa shared the example of the business owner that owned the business owner legal solution plan. I think in her example, I was the one that sold it to him, if I remember correctly. I must not have followed up that day. It must have been my first sale. That was the one I cut my teeth on. Anyway, the point is, uh, and I've had some of those I didn't follow up on, and, and you know, the, the business owner thought it was a complicated ordeal to get in touch with the attorney. She was speaking out of ignorance, that business owner, because on a, obviously she'd never tried it. Uh, she, she, she just thought it was complicated, and that was her reason for canceling when she looked on her credit card bill or you know, realized $75 a month was coming out of her bank account and it was something that she was not using because it was too complicated to use. So we got to get the member to call the law firm, okay? And then I'm going to review the plan benefits just very quickly, again, at a high level. But the second objective I have is to get the business owner to go into the Go Small Biz website to activate their membership, okay? And to take them through and show them how to use their membership and to at least, at the very minimum, ask a question for one of the consultants, okay? And just like Melissa said that second to that are the legal forms, and I agree with that, we're gonna do that as well in the follow-up. These are the two that I'm going to do if I can't do anything else. If they say, Mark, I'm so glad you're here, but buddy, you've got five minutes, okay? Because I gotta go. I say, great, get your phone, and just get your membership card, and let's call the law firm. And then two and a half minutes later, you know, after the intake's been created, I go, great, where's your computer? We're going to go ahead and activate your Go Small Biz. And if I have to leave in five minutes, that follow-up, those two things, because here's what's going to happen, understand. I just showed them how to do the two most basic but important things, get in touch with their provider law firm and get consultation help, right? But what's going to happen after that? Sometime within the next eight business hours, they're going to get a call back from the provider attorney. And sometime within the next two business days, they're going to get an email that says you have an answer in your Go Small Biz website to review from your consultant. So even if I only have five minutes to do my follow-up, the follow-up is continuing after I'm gone. Now, if I take that five minutes and I show them how cool the forms are and I show them their membership benefits again and I leave, they're not getting any phone calls. They're not getting any emails. Does that make sense? So that's why that's important to get those two things done Absolutely.